What is going on everybody, my name is the Dizzy Viper and welcome to this tutorial. So for the past few days I have got asked a lot how I make these type of drift renders uh, that are actually my everydays from the last couple of days. And today I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm actually not going to recreate the whole scenes uh, because that would just take too long because I gotta admit that um, lighting in this scene is a lot of experimentation. So I'm going to open a scene and break it down for you. I hope that you understand everything and if not, just ask in the comment section down below and I am happy to help you out. So here we have the DeLorean drift scene, which is this one right here. Um, and as you can see already, it kind of looks weird. So as you can see, the scene is extremely weirdly built. And that is because I specifically created the scene just to look good and at this camera settings at that camera angle for this one frame. Um, so let us let me just break it down for you uh, because it, as I said it's really really simple. So the first thing I did was on this car I just make, made the wheel spin as you can see like that. It's actually really just a straightforward animation um, but what you have to be very careful with is if you download a vehicle like I did um, the wheels sometimes are not grouped or they are just separate objects and you might have to regroup them. And when doing so, make sure that the center of the wheels is in the exact middle of the axle. And that is because later on we're going to be using motion blur to actually blur the wheels a little bit while they're spinning. And if it's not in the exact center of the wheel, the wheel would sort of look mushy because it vibrates. So be very careful on that. And don't put the axis of the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Put it, um, from if you look at it from above, right here. Because this is where the wheel would be uh, built onto the axle. So that way you get a more realistic turn animation of the wheel. And another thing I did, I tilted the car about 5 degrees to the left. Or you have to do that into the direction your car is drifting in. Uh, and I did that because I know that the DeLorean has a very soft suspension and this would happen if you would drift a DeLorean. Um, and for the other image with Hans RX-7 right here from Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, as you can see it's not tilted as much. It's tilted I think 1 or 2 degrees maybe. And uh, that is because race cars or drift cars like this or sports cars have a harder suspension and they won't tilt as much. So having explained everything from the car, you might be wondering uh, how do I animate a drifting car? And to be honest, in this scene the car doesn't move, but everything else does. So, um, and I did that because I have had some issues with uh, the camera and the DeLorean. Even if I put them in the same uh, null object, so they move at the same speed together, the DeLorean still gets blurred out. So what I did here is I actually do that in pretty much every other um, image as well, because it, it I feel that it gives me a little bit more control on how the scene will look like at the end. So everything else but the car moves as you can see, like this. Wait, let me just turn that off, otherwise you will just see the axle of the wheel all the time, like this. As you can see, everything else moves. And you might be wondering why these planes don't move. And that is because the camera doesn't see them. These planes are just here for lighting and reflection. But actually there is one plane that reflects on the windshield, which should be this one, I think. And this one moves because the the uh, the reflection on the windshield obviously also has to be motion blurred. Otherwise, otherwise it would look a little weird. But we'll, we'll get uh, into the lighting a little later. First I would like to show you what these things are. These are actually my VDB volumes that I used to create this uh, smoke effect on the tires. It's not created by Turbulence FD or Houdini. Um, it's just a VDB volume by Mitch Myers from his VDB collection. And what I did here, I just, you know, stretched them and, and sort of made them flatter so they it actually would look like they come from the wheels. And they obviously also move with the street because the smoke will go away from the car. So the smoke also gets blurred a little bit. And the reason they don't align right here is because it's an animation, I had to keyframe it so the clouds actually, oh, the clouds and the rest of the scene aligns with my car on a certain keyframe or a certain frame. And the last keyframe of the animation, as you can see right here, the last keyframe of the moving scene right here is actually not on frame 43. It's on 44. And the reason for that is because if you actually shot 
the scene at frame 44, where the last keyframe of the animation is, the animation will have stopped by frame 44. So there is no motion to capture. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna shoot your animation on one frame before the animation stops. And the tricky part about that is that you have to go to frame 44 and move your objects even further than what you want to shoot uh, so that it aligns on frame 43 in this case. Uh, but that's just a little bit of trying and a little bit of mathematics and you will get there. So let's go into the lighting. Let me just open Octane Render really quick so I can show you. So this is what the scene looks like uh, from another perspective than the camera and it looks really weird. And I'm gonna explain to you every single or all of these planes and what they do. So these materials are actually something really simple. They are just um, a image texture of my Tokyo street in the diffuse channel and the same texture in the texture emission channel of the same material. Um, and then just put it on a plane and put it in the back of your scene. So, so what I did, I used some different images from Tokyo at night. And what you have to make sure to get the sort of illusion, uh, like right here, that is actually a real or actual houses and stuff in the back of, of your scene. Uh, you have to search for pictures that are shot at least in a similar angle of your camera. Um, and you can do like, you can change it a little bit by stretching it and, and um, but what really helps with doing this actually is that it's motion blurred so it, it won't really uh, matter too much if it's slightly off. Obviously this only works for pictures and not for animations, at least not as well. I, I think it would work for animation but just not as well. And the other thing is, um, what you also have to be careful about is if you use like a st stack of images up here, you obviously can also use uh, a couple of different images, obviously. I just used two different images because it, it I wanted to do it fast, so that's why. Um, but what you have to be careful about is that also the plane that reflects on your windshield or any other really defining part of your car um, has to be in motion as well. Otherwise the reflection on your windshield will not be motion blurred, uh, but the rest of the scene will be. And that's not how this works in real life. So getting into your camera settings to get this motion blur is you're just going to your Octane camera tag, go to motion blur, enable it. And I always keep the time shift to zero and you just have to play with the shutter around a bit. It might happen that you don't see a motion blur. Make sure that all your objects you want to have motion blur on uh, have a opta Octane object tag on them. And if you still don't see a motion, just go back one frame and then go back to the frame you want to see and you will see that the motion blur is there. And last but not least, I would like you to give a really quick tip on how to work on reflections or at least how I do it. Um, I simply go to my options in my viewport and uncheck the camera and that way I can move my viewport around and change things, but Octane will still uh, look through my camera. And that really simplifies working on reflections. So as you can see, if I have this um, plane right here, which I think should be the reflection up here, you can see in the windshield, um, you can just move it like right here and actually see what you're doing. It saves a lot of time with like going in, looking what it looks like, going back, changing it again. So yeah, I thought that would be something worth knowing. But other than that, it's also a lot of experimenting and stuff. So that was the tutorial, or it actually was rather a breakdown, uh, but I hope it helped you. If you have any more questions, just ask in the comment section down below, and I will be willing to answer them as soon as possible. Other than that, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.